orgy time, uh, Middle Ages, it was commonly believed that in France and England that February 14th was the beginning of birds mating season, which added the idea that the middle of February and Valentine's Day should be the day. How can birds mating season be considered the day for romance of God? The oldest known Valentine still exists in the day was a poem written by Charles Duke of Orleans to his wife while he was in prison at Tower of London. Anybody, you know, the prison and the Valentine's card? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah, he was in the Tower of London following his capture at the Battle of Agincourt. The greeting which was written in 1415 as part of the manuscript collection of the British Library in London. Several years later, it believed that King Henry V hired a writer named John Lig 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 Litigation, folks. John Lydgate? Litigation. <laughs> to compose a Valentine note to Catherine of... Oh, God. You realize that? That's my, that's my family, fellas. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, remember, all the good-looking hunks. Oh, that's they, them. They are, those yeah, she thinks my family are really great-looking. The whole god are. They are. Forget, um, yeah. what is it, the Vampire Diaries these yeah. days. Okay, in Great Britain, Valentine's Day began to be popular, popularly celebrated around the 17th century. Um, by the middle of the 18th century, it was common for friends and lovers in all social classes to exchange small tokens of affection or handwritten notes. By the end of the century, printed cards began to replace written letters due to improvements in printing technology. Yeah, it kind of goes with time, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ready-made cards were an easy way for people to express their emotions in a time when direct expressions of one's feelings was discouraged. Oh yeah, the cards said it all, yeah. right? Then cheaper postage rates also contributed to an increase in the popularity of sending Valentine's Day greetings. Americans probably began exchanging handmade Valentines in the early 1700s, and in the 1840s, Esther A. Howland began to sell the first mass-produced Valentines in America. That probably coincided with the possibility of mass production. Yeah, uh, industrialization of America. And when the printing press, I'll just put it this way, when the printing press was developed, Valentine's became very popular to give to people in communities. Mm -hmm. So, according to Greeting Card Association, they estimated one billion Valentine cards are sent each year, making Valentine's Day the second largest card selling sending holiday of the year an estimated 2.6 billion cards for Christmas. I think also Valentine's Day is it number one or number two for sending flowers compared to I think the other day is Mother's Day. Yeah it's also it's actually a, it's just bigger than for candy and stuff <laughs> than it is for Easter which is funny. Oh really? The Easter, uh, Valentine's. Oh because Easter is generally for kids where Valentine's Day is for uh, it's for it's for everybody. Valentine's Day basically can, it's young or old, it doesn't make any difference because you give can okay, every I mean I, I used to give candy with my my mother would make certain there was little candy hearts with everything I gave out, so mm -hmm. and that's how it is. They you know these little things that they basically throw away nowadays. Mm -hmm. They you and you know, candy corn too, folks. Mm -hmm. So, but um, approximately eighty-five percent of all Valentines are purchased by women. In addition, the United States Valentine is celebrated in Canada, Mexico, and I can like eighty-five percent. That's a screwed up figure. I happen to know that guys are the ones that buy. Eighty-five percent of Valentines are purchased by women. Uh, 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 nah, somehow chance. that doesn't sound right. Uh, I think about fifty percent of the kids in school are boys, mm -hmm. and fifty percent of girls. If so, figure that right out there. I mean, if all you did was go by that figure, it sounds like women are just sending it all to themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? If you're a male and you forget Valentine's Day, you know it. If you've got a girlfriend or a wife or a mother or a sister. Yeah, that's one of the days you better not forget. Because unlike a birthday, which you shouldn't forget either, um, at least on Valentine's Day, everybody else is talking about what they're doing for Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, God, it's just, I mean, we got so much stuff coming in the mail. Well, we're, you're lucky. You've been invited to a low special rate for you and your significant other. They call them significant others today. Well, you know, it's also one of those big days for going out to dinner where you overpay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to overpay for dinner, and you're going to overpay for your babysitter. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and because you also everything you and not only overpaying, you're ordering stuff that you wouldn't normally get. Mm -hmm. I mean, you like, usually have a fixed menu. Yeah, day. but you're being, you know, oh, here's having this, have that. You need the chocolate liqueur to go with this. You need the candy. You need the dipped strawberries. You need the dipped 
bananas. You need the, you know, all I know. The, they all kind of stuff. Um, Valentine <laughs> greetings were popular as far back as the Middle Ages. Written Valentine's Day began to appear, um, didn't begin to appear until after 1400. So probably coincided with the availability of uh, you know, like to this. do it. Um, and the oldest known Valentine card is on display at the British Museum. Yeah. Wow. Um, but, you know, Esther A. Holland was the mother of Valentine, made elaborate creations with real lace ribbons and colorful pictures known as scrap. Okay, the Hallmark cards as we know them didn't come until the, uh, I think the early part of the 20th century. And what was funny was the gentleman, it was a man, Hallmark was not, even though he had a, a lot of people understand, a lot of English names sound feminine, but they're not girls, these are guys' names. Like Joyce. Joyce, um, uh, Joyce actually sounds like a feminine name. Yeah. But Alice is also a male name, folks. It's not. It's not. Alice is a female name. Alice is a male's name. Really, I didn't know that. And uh, Jim, you know, Jimmy, a girl's name as well as a male name. Billy can be a male name as. Uh, and so um, the, the the I think it was Joyce Hallmark was the creator of the Hallmark card. You know, so he's the one that basically you can blame for all the Amer Helen was uh, was uh, he got the idea from Helen and expanded upon it with a rid more original cards. I mean, today the people make a god off a ton of money designing cards. Uh, um, okay, um, the, uh, what was the movie what? with uh, with Christopher Palmer? Beginners. And the beginner. That's what I thought it was. Basically, that's what he was was a card designer. The uh, Remember, um, you know, the uh, poor guy, which I can't remember, is his Evan McGregor. Evan McGregor was a card designer. And that's, they wanted him to do more romantic things. He couldn't. He just doing things about his father. So. Well, here we're actually focused on cards. Now, it actually is a really nice gesture. Um, if you still hand write a card or you give somebody a card. I always used to create my own card, but then I was a graphic artist. But now pe a lot of people are doing things through email. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, places like the greeting card companies that are online, which actually, okay, the best is a handwritten card. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that are the most difficult to do yeah. are always the more prized because no one does them. So... A handwritten card, yeah. a store-bought mass-produced card, an email greeting card, well, I, I an do. email, at, at, um, anyway, because, no, acknowledging I, it, and then also a text message. No, but when... Or telephone, imagine a telephone call. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's all better yet in person. Back in the dark ages when I went to school, that was a way that teachers got you to practice your, you know, your basically writing skills. Oh, they would expect you to take a pen, you know, a calligraphy pen, and you make each card individually with that. Everything you basically you tried to make it as simple as can be. You yeah. know, I wish you a happy Valentine's Day. Uh, and then you'd write it 40 times, but then... then you practice your hand. Well, I always thought of it was the way to practice, like, cutting out the hearts and doing the lace. Oh, yeah, and, we did that. Like, craft stuff. You stuff. sit there and go, mm, basically, you just sit there and go like this, mm -hmm, and you've got, oh, it opens. And then, but the real trick is when you can make it do like that. Or to make the lacy ones, though, you know, when you're doing the more intricate cuts, ta it's, it's a way to teach you to do the crafts. Because when I, I took, when I had to take crafts, see, I think, she, she grew up in a nunnery, so it was different. But I had a craft teacher when I was young, younger, that basically made certain that when it came to Halloween time, that you had to make intricate Halloween cards for everybody in the class. Okay. And you sit there, and he, you know, you sit there with your scissors, you sit there and do all this little cutting stuff, and, and so basically you could end up like, you can make big Valentines and little Valentines on the same thing. I go like that. I still have some of them. I get those, yeah. you know, and they said, well, all of you gentlemen are going to make cards for your mothers, whether you wish to make them or not, because mothers are very important. And he would give us this, and it is not too much for you to take the time out of mm -hmm. your day to do something for your mother. Mm -hmm. So we'd sit there and, <laughs> and try to do it. Some, some people really butchered this stuff. That I sat there and I would overdo because I actually ended up as an artist. I overdid everything. And they would then, he, I would get in trouble. But he would say, Now this is how it should be done. And he'd go like this, you see the other. But they say, They used cuss words back in the days when I was young. <laughs> you see a moment under their breath about what I would do. I was an art, 
artist. I ended up working as an artist in my life. So I thought it was neat to make intricate things. Mm -hmm. Other boys didn't. They don't do it at all today. You go over, you buy Batman cards for your mother and for the girl in your class, if you are still allowed to do it. Or, uh, or, or Incredible Hulk. I mean, boys would never send a card that says, you know, <clears throat> love from such and such. Well, and Valentine's Day is one of those holidays that you don't have to get a huge gift. Although women always do appreciate it anyway. But the most Ice cream, candy, cake. Most important thing is to remember the holiday. <laughs> no? I, I remember when I got my only ever Emmy nomination and I'm sitting down there and basically it's not the same. The, the thought is not the same as going up there and getting an Emmy. The thought is, you know, well, I, I was thinking of you when I give you this card instead of the five pound box of candy because I knew the candy would make you fat. See, that's always a difference. You should get them the, the chocolate. Get them, get them the chocolate. Because there's another reason for it. Because I discovered when I was quite young, you get your mother the best bunch of chocolate you can get. You so can, you eat, can it. eat it. You can eat it. You get her, you get your mother and your sisters everything that you like. My brothers never got me anything for Valentine's Day. Yeah, but you grew up in a nunnery. My mom always sent me a card. Because she was in a nunnery, you know. I mean, when you're in a nunnery, they're not allowed to. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, But yeah. Well, she was in as well. She was in the, uh, the you know, the basically the Bahamas, you know. Now we'll go back to that part about 85% of all Valentines are bought by women. No. I wonder if 85% of Valentine's gifts are all bought by women. Um, I would assume eighty five percent of all the money is spent by women, which basically is a bull. You know, I told you this is not like we've done before. And uh, I, I pick I love the information as you can tell this is from more than one source because it, it dropped over on itself a bit. But uh, no, we're you know, we're gonna give you a different thing. I think Easter no, Saint Patrick's Day is coming up next. Yes. And then we can talk about my grandmother and St. Patrick's Day. And she can talk about... Is that about Day or something? I don't know. We don't oh, do, President's Day. We don't do President's Day. No, but we, we do because things like Valentine's Day. Because the President's Day was basically they're putting people together whose birthday isn't on that oh, time. Yeah. So we'll do Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's, and then probably Easter after that. Yeah, we'll do Valentine's We'll do St. Patrick's because she's got an Irish relative the same as I do. Yeah, her name is Monty Bubbles. Yeah, and Monty is a very pretty cousin. Oh, actually, no, my grandma, my step-grandma. Her step-grandma step is from Ireland. And actually, I found out I could become an Irish citizen. I, I think I am. Um, I think I'm something or other, Lord, something or other from Ireland. So, but until next time, when we talk about St. Patrick's Day from an insider's point of view, this is all to come. And this is not a spring chick. Happy Valentine's Day.